All right, what is going on guys? So today I wanna to give you an introductory breakdown of Docker and sort of give you an example of how you would actually use all of this and Dockerize an app, then run it. So to start this, I drew out this very basic diagram to short, sort of show you what all of the different pieces of Docker actually do. So one of the things I struggled with when I was trying to learn this a while ago was I didn't really understand what all the pieces were and what Docker actually did. So anytime you hear about Docker, people are gonna tell you Docker will containerize your application, but what does that actually mean? That doesn't really mean anything if you don't sort of understand all this. So effectively what that means is we're going to start over here with our code base and our Docker file. This is going to be your project and then you're going to put a Docker file within there and that's going to define how we're going to build said container. So I'll break down what the container actually is later when we actually get into a Docker file, but effectively it's a little instance where we can set things up and do whatever you want. Imagine it's just a little box that is a separate computer. It's just a tiny little box that you can define and set up however you want and then that box can be run anywhere, put anywhere, and it'll work the exact same. So we're defining all of that here. And then when we run the Docker build command, this is going to generate a Docker image. So a Docker image is going to be a built container that we can then run or we can host to either Docker Hub, which is very similar to GitHub. It's a place where you can push up all your Docker images and manage them and store them and then pull those down onto different devices. Or you could upload this to some other container registry like GCP or AWS or Azure. All of these different places have their own container registries. So you could build your Docker image. You could upload it to that container registry and then you could pull from that container registry to like some production environment or whatever. That's a very common way of managing CI CD and that kind of thing. But the next state we could take an image to is actually running it. So we did Docker run, we can take this built image and then we can actually turn this into a fully running server and application. So let's take a look at how to actually do this. All right, so in here I am using the Fiber Mongo example I built last week. And I think it's a pretty good example of how we can do, you know, basic. It's a good example of, you know, an actual API that we could deploy to the cloud or whatever. So here, uh, note this down here. Yes, these, before I even get started and you mention it, yes, I know these should not be in here. These should be injected at build time or they should be injected from this environment or CLI. But since I'm just doing this locally, I don't really care. I'm spinning up a MongoDB instance. This is hosted on Railay. It will be deleted before this video goes live. So it doesn't actually matter that, yeah, I know I'm leaking this, but again, it's going to get deleted. So who cares? With that out of the way, I have a Docker file to take this fiber API, which connects to a MongoDB back end to dockerize it, to containerize it, and then run this. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to first every single Docker file has to begin with this from directive. So the from directive is going to set the base image of what we're working in. So the base image is effectively, it's loading up some configuration and information for whatever you need to do, or it's loading up the configuration and information about your current instance. So when I'm doing from Golang 1.19, et cetera, et cetera, this is effectively saying that I'm going to get all of the stuff that this comes with in my project, which is going to be go is going to be installed. So if I do go mod download, that's going to be installed. But if I did this like from node or whatever, I would only have the node tools downloaded or installed. So you need to make sure that whatever you're from here is, is going to have the stuff you need. And then over here, I'm tagging this as builder and we'll use that later when we spin up another environment in the from scratch. So this is going to be my builder environment. Within my builder environment, I'm going to set my work directory to slash build. That just means that we're, we are generating a directory within this little container we're building up here that is the build directory. And then within that, we're going to be copying these in. So if you think about it, we have all this stuff over here. All of this is not actually already copied into that directory. So we haven't actually, this directory is empty. So we need to copy this stuff in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say copy go.mod go.sum to dot slash, which is going to be into this build directory. So then at this point, all build is going to have within it is going to be this go.mod and this go.sum. And since I only have these two things in here, that's all I need. I can then run, run go mod download. And that's going to download all the packages I need that are declared within my go.mod file. So all this stuff will get downloaded. Then once we've done that, I can go ahead and copy everything else out. So I'm going to do copy dot to dot. So that basically means I'm going to copy everything in this directory into this directory here. So I copy everything over, then I set some environment variables so that I can build this. Then I use the go build command to turn this into an actual executable binary. So go can be compiled down into binary. So what we're doing here, we're just doing go build, setting some basic flags. And then the key thing here is this dash O API server. That means that the output is going to be an executable called API server. And I'm doing it to the current directory, which is going to be build. So all of this is done and our builder step is complete. Now we are spinning up a new step called scratch. So from scratch is the most basic from command that you can do anywhere. And this is going to have nothing pre-installed. This doesn't have node. This doesn't have 
Um, this doesn't have node, this doesn't have go, this doesn't have anything else in it. It just has, it's just from scratch. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a copy, but instead of just copying from this directory over here, we're going to do copy from builder. So remember we define this as builder up here. We can go ahead and we're going to copy from builder slash build. Remember our work directory was build and then API server and we, uh, our go output was API server. So we're going to be pulling build API server. So that's the file we're pulling in. And then we're going to pull that into the root of this scratch area, which is going to be slash API server. So that means that we're going to be taking everything we built over here and putting it into this new scratch instance. So the only thing within this scratch instance is going to be this slash API server. Then down here, I'm setting these environment variables. Again, this is not good practice. You should inject these later on, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just putting them in here. It'll make it easier. And then we can go ahead and do CMD slash API server. And this CMD is specifying what command we should do to actually run this. So you can either put a CMD here or you could put an entry point. Entry point would not actually, when you did Docker run, it wouldn't actually do anything. That is for if you are doing something like Docker compose, which that's another video for another day. So we've got this going. We have our CMD API server. So whenever we build this, it'll do all this stuff. And then whenever we run this image, it will run this command. It'll run slash API server. So let's take a look at how that actually works. So down here in my command line, I'm going to do Docker build and then dash T. So that's going to tag this as go demo. And then I'm going to pull it from dot. So I'm going to pull it from this current directory. So let's go ahead and run this. It's going to take a couple seconds to build. So what it's going to do is it's going to up here. So it's transferring the context. It's loading the metadata from here. So this Golang 1.193, it's loading it up here. Then it's doing all this stuff. It's going to go through each step. It's going to create the work directory, copy everything over, run the download, copy everything over, keep building, and now we are done. So we have this built image. And for the sake of this, I'm going to use Docker desktop because this is a good visual example. Yes. So right in here, we have this go demo. So remember we tagged it as go demo. It's got all this stuff right here. That's its size, basic stuff. If we click on it, we can get some more information. But the whole point here is that we are effectively doing um, the image layers here. You can see these, the final steps from our scratch. So we're building everything over. And then now that we've got this, we have this image and now this isn't going to do anything. So we actually have to run it. So to run this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Docker run and I'm going to do dash DP. So what is that DP doing? So the dash D means detached. That means that when I run this, it's not going to block my CLI. It's going to run it in the background on a separate thread. And then the P is going to specify what port this is. So I'm going to be running the 3000, 3000 just means that we're going to be mapping 3000 from the uh, image itself. So remember I set my ENV of port to be 3000. So that means that on within the image, my HTTP server is going to be running on 3000. And then this is going to connect up to 3000 on the outside. And then finally the image itself that we want to run is going to be go demo. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's going to give me the ID out here. And then if we go back to our containers list here, it gave it a random name. And right here we have running this guy right here. So we can click on this and I can look at the logs and I can see, okay, it just spun up my fiber app. Everything seems to be working. Yep. So we've got everything working right here. Our fiber app is ready. So let's actually test this out. So right in here, I have an API root exposed at localhost 3000 slash books. Let's go ahead and post to this. I'm going to send, it's going to give me back this result. So I can just post a couple more and then let's get and there we go. So our entire application is fully containerized and is running inside of this, is running within this container right here. So makes life really, really easy. Um, it just kind of works. And then if we wanted to, we could push this up to our CI CD and then we could put this container on any cloud platform we want and it's going to run the exact same way. And that's the real benefit of Docker is we define this container. And if this container works on my computer, if it works this way on my computer, as long as I have these environment variables, it's going to work exactly the same way anywhere I run this. So any place we run this container, it's going to work the exact same way, which is really, really nice. So hopefully that gave you a good basic intro understanding of Docker. The core concepts of the Docker file is defining how we're building this, how some of the building works, and then the and then the sort of diagram of what we're doing. Image can go to hub or it can go to the running server, whatever you want to do. There's much more to it than this, but this is a good introduction and I will do more advanced stuff at a later date.